Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we're going to focus on launching Duna missions, but I've also upgraded all of the USI colonization mods, at least to whatever the latest version I could find was, and we need to review what that has changed. Uh, first of all, I've got this little icon here called Ground Workshops that I'm not entirely sure about, but that's a new little icon. But also the life support status here also, uh, for some reason, the map view is flickering occasionally. That worries me. But, um, see, I, I don't understand why it's flickering every now and again. But life support status, um, well, it's no longer counting to the minute. It says a lot of things are expired. I, yeah, so I'm a little bit concerned. I, I think that's just because we haven't checked up on them. Let's check up on them and see if everything is all right, because... It might not be, since I upgraded all the mods. Oh, uh, before we uh, check on them, though, the reason I upgraded the USI colonization mods was to get the other other job titles, if you will. So, taking a look at the astronaut complex, now we have a whole bunch of other things here. I don't know if this is such a good thing. I sort of miss having just the pilot, scientists, and engineers yeah, this is maybe overdoing it. But uh, on the right side, hiring applicants doesn't cost as much. So, yeah. Um, we also can't, I guess, pick based on their name, which is normally what I do. Normally, I, I select applicants based on their name. Because I like to be able to pronounce them. I, I don't... I'd really like to randomize the courage and stupidity and uh, I can't see under, let me see, unlock positions, move, bulk higher selector, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know if this random would randomize everything, but I, I really want to randomize this, I, I, it's not fair telling a Kerbal how courageous and stupid they ought to be and whether they should be fearless and select your level. Okay, well that makes them cost more. Wow, colonists and biologists are real cheap. Miner, technician, all these other ones are very, very, very cheap apparently. Which probably means we need a lot of them. There's also two colonists. One here and one here. So, this has gotten a lot more complicated. Let's take a look at our our existing Kerbals who are deployed and focus on whether they are alright for now. Okay, uh, here we are at Colonization Base 1 on the moon. And let's try and clear up... Okay. Um, it looks like they have 140 days of supplies, not what it was reading before. Four days of electric charge, but we know we've got a reactor, well, we've got a disabled reactor, but more importantly we have the carbonite mining thing. Um, interesting, HAB one year, but HAB for Samarina is indefinite and HAB for Jebediah is indefinite. I don't know why it's indefinite for them. Are they both in like this habitation module? Uh, let's see, transfer crew, no, only Samarina is in there. Hmm. And who's in here? Georgie. So that's weird. I think both Jeb and Bill are in the agricultural modules. Yeah, they're both in here. So you wouldn't think that Jeb and Bill would have a different situation. They're both, you know, originals, right? So why is it indefinite for Jeb, I wonder? Okay, well, so that's a mystery. And let's turn to PBI-1 on Minmus and see how that's looking like. Uh, Rodsby. Rodsby is not happy. Rodsby is a tourist. And Hab is expired for Rodsby. Otherwise, um, it looks like Hab is 41 days. Supplies 96 days. Poor Rodsby though. Nothing worse than turning into a tourist. Okay. Well, it says pilot down here. Tourist there. That's that T, red T. But, yeah, apparently a pilot here. But it says tourists may not disembark, so he's really a tourist. 
And finally, let's check on the status of Sigmore. All right, well, uh, this, this life support window is big, but uh, there's the Mars Cycler complex. The Cycler is only the center portion. And it looks like Sigmore's got 143 days of supplies, 13 days of electric charge, indefinite on the hab and home. It says up here hab for five years and four, 204 days, but there it says indefinite, so maybe he'll be all right indefinitely? I don't know. I don't know if I can trust that. Seems a little bit too convenient, but who knows. All right, maybe they're better off if they don't have Kerbals around, but then that doesn't explain the indefinites for for Jeb and Samrina. All right, well, anyway, let's get on with the Duna missions. Now, the plan for this transfer window to Duna is to just get the base sort of set up, or at least the base modules within 150 meters of each other. Um, we'll have sort of like the core base that we have on the moon, and then add to that a reactor. I thought about sending a carbonite miner thing. Uh, I think that might be a better, cheaper alternative, but uh, the reactor seems cooler. It's very expensive though. We'll, we'll go with the reactor, I think. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm still of two minds about that, but that's alright. First, we are uh, doing the mission that's going to pay for things, and this will definitely not have any Kerbals. It is uh, fulfilling this mission, conduct an orbital survey of Duna, and then also conduct an orbital survey of Ike. It says that we need to do a number of experiments around Duna, radio plas plasma wave scan from high orbit, SIGINT uh, scan from uh, low orbit above Duna. The SIGINT thing is this oversized signals intelligence satellite, and it's sort of got its own fairing around it. I, it doesn't actually have a deploy option inside the VAB. Thankfully it has its own antenna rating which is really good. So we don't have to worry about putting up a, a separate antenna, well long-range antenna anyway. Um, spectral analysis, mystery goo, orbital telescope, material studies. So the actual satellite looks like this. The the, the SIGINT part is really big. The, there, the Ike version has everything the same except for recon scan. And I didn't want to put a recon scan on because it would have to be on the opposite side of the SIGINT. Um, so we're going to leave that off and not do that one because it says return or transmit data from at least five of the following experiments. And there are six options. So I think we can skip skip that one. Otherwise we have all the instruments here. And we've got soil panels. Uh, they are scaled to 250%. And uh, they're like that. So hopefully they'll be good. We've got three goo containers. We've only got one science junior. Oops, that's a mistake. Is it? No, no. A material study only has to be done around Duna. I'm going to be real careful about where I do these things. Yeah, the material study is only around Duna. It does not have to be done around Ike. And Ike doesn't even need a mystery goo observation, but we might as well do one. Uh, we've got extra science as well, just in case. Um, not that one, but we've also got the survey scanner because we'll want to get a proper scan. So probably need to get into um, polar orbit around both Ike and Duna. So that could be tricky, but the satellite itself has 2,521 meters per second. And it's not expected to make the transfer. The transfer will be done by the skipper stage here. So it should be all right. We hope so. Anyway, but this is what we're using to uh, fund ourselves. We've got a little reaction wheel there. And we've got substantial battery power. We've got a battery bank there and some, some additional batteries on the probe core. And then an LV-909. So that's our satellite. Of course, this survey scanner is on a hinge, so it'll uh, extend like that, but we'll leave that for now. Okay, so let's try and launch this. This is Duna Colony Launch 00, because it's not really part of the colony itself, but sort of necessary from a mission standpoint. After all, we do also want to know where to land our colony. That will be an important piece of information. We are trying to recover the booster. Stage recovery says not great on the recovery percentage, but at least it's potentially doable. 
Okay, so here we are. We are technically one day and three hours before the transfer window, but that'll give us some time to sort things out. Throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Most of the expense of this is actually the scientific instruments on the satellite, on the probe. And that's also why we're only sending one for both Duna and Ike. If necessary, we could use pipes to refuel the satellite, potentially, in orbit. Haven't done that before, but it's an option. We're past the speed of sound. Have to be careful about flipping and all. I don't know what kind of aerodynamics that huge SIGINT thing is going to provide. Okay, we should be through the worst of it. And set. And skipper. Fairings sort of had an issue there, but that's all right. I'm not gonna do any of the. Well, I guess we do have to deploy the dish because we need communication. Oh, there is a little flaw in my plan in that we're not gonna be getting electric charge while this makes our transfer. I haven't actually seen what's inside of this thing. Okay, uh, not quite making orbit, but pretty darn close on a single burn. We haven't done the burn at Apoapsis yet. Okay, uh, well let's wait until we're in space. I ought to check when we're supposed to transfer to Duna here. It's possible we don't actually have to get into orbit. I mean, well, we'll get into orbit incidentally as we're doing the Duna transfer burn, I mean. We don't have to do a burn at Apoapsis specifically. Well, there's a number of options. I think this option is fine. Right there. We can fine tune it later, but yeah. It looks like our... We won't do an Apoapsis burn to lift our periapsis into space, we'll just do this burn here. Okay, well, we are in space, let's open it up and see what it's like. Um, jettison Shroud. Okay, so that's the thing. Deploy Dish. Whoa, my god. Oh, wow. Um... Um... Yeah, I think it's safe to say we're going to stay in communication with uh, Kerbin. Yeah. Yeah. Holy mackerel. They really went overboard with this stuff. That's military spy program for you. We don't need to collect data right now. It said something about using it five times. I don't know if that's it being honest in the description or whether they were just fooling with us, but I'll save it for when we need it. Let's hope the dish doesn't like bump into too many micrometeoroids causing us drag or something. Well, we wanted a polar sort of approach. We could probably fill around with it once we get into Duna Sphere Influence. Right now, we'd have to do something with inclination, because it's obviously too far off in that direction. Okay, we've got 300 left in this stage. How much will we take to capture? Uh huh. Well, it's a little bit more than I thought. We're not using Duna Atmosphere, after all. 1,300. Well, we should still be able to do that and still accidentally get some sort of encounter with Ike. Once we break orbit. 
or boost out. Ike does tend to make it easy. Yeah, I think we'll have enough without uh, carrying the skipper with us. So, and we need to ditch the skipper to get the electric charge anyway. So, off it goes. And let's... Okay, it's just a big dish with a tiny little stage attached to it, but that tiny little stage has a lot of science. A lot of expensive science. And now our approach is completely off. Hold on. Oh wait, if we turn like this, we're eventually going to hit the skipper stage, huh? Well, let's try this direction. Okay. Probably if we get closer to Duna, it won't cost so much to make orbit. But with a dish like this, I don't think we're going to be arrow breaking. I don't know what kind of heat tolerance this thing has, but I doubt it's very good. So let's add. Um, I don't want the SOI change exiting Kerbin. Let's make a dummy maneuver in Dunasphere influence. Okay, and that one we will add. All right, first mission on its way. And what a mission it is. Yep. That will be an inspiring or fearsome sight for our Kerbal colonists. Okay, next. Alright, so things are going well. We did recover the first stage for the previous launch, by the way. And here is our second launch, Duna Colony 01, which is the main colony module with the Pioneer module here. Uh, two agricultural modules and a habitation module. Launch 2 will be the one that contains the material kits to expand the modules, but for now we'll just leave it as is. It's got communications with these and also it's uh, got some Communitron 16s around. Uh, only these solar panels for now for power because we are going to be trying to deliver a reactor, though if that doesn't work out well for us we might also decide to do something else like the carbonite unit. Um, it is supposed to air break into orbit around Duna, so we've got the heat shield there. Um, the ablator is down to 10% of the total ablator capacity. I don't think we need too much ablation. Ablator, whatever. Anyway, uh, and then we've got an orange that's going to help it make a soft landing. The orange also has the drogue shoots. I've squished the orange because I don't intend to bring it back up to orbit. It will be disposed of. There is another launch that will contain an orange that will go back to orbit. So uh, we'll just use that one instead. So this will just set the module on the surface and then fly away and crash. Okay, so that is the plan, but how will it go? I don't know. Uh, the main uh, Duna burn will be done by the skipper stage, just like with the previous mission. Alright. So, let's sort everything out. And let's find out how this works. Okay, so here we are. Looks very familiar. Throttle up. SAS is on. I deliberately tried to make the launches smaller so that we aren't like putting too many eggs in one basket. So that's part of the idea here. Anyway, as if the, each module wasn't expensive enough already, I wonder why it's short supplies here. Um, oh, the, uh, it's not, the little modules aren't filled with supplies. I guess that's all right. Uh, it'll just make things heavier. All right, let's go. We're past the speed of sound, things are looking alright. There's a smaller fairing than we sometimes use on this rocket, so I don't expect any aerodynamic issues, but I will remain vigilant. Here we go. Separation and ignition. Well, something collided into something there. 
Those fairings aren't releasing like they used to. The interstage fairings. I hope that's not going to be a problem for these fairings. We'll see. Okay, fairing separation. Nope, they're all good. Let's just make sure that communication is solid. And the dishes are clearing the orange. Ah, it seems like we have some drag with that. With that up there. Probably not a great shape to be hitting this part of the atmosphere with, even though it's thin. Okay, same sort of situation. We're actually getting some flame effects. Yeah, definite drag here and probably excessive flame effects just now. Okay, well, well, that's a lot of drag. Yeah, it looks like this really took a chunk out of our. Wow, look at the ablator. Um, We've, we've lost a bit of a blader coming up. Actually, probably we're going to lose half of it. So that's not great. No, the drag on this definitely uh, killed our Delta V. Okay, that should be enough of a boost. Let's try and do the same thing we did with the other probe. Ooh. Well, this is the wrong thing to try and bring into Ike orbit. We don't have a contract to build an Ike base, unfortunately. I really wanted one. I thought there was one available before, but there isn't one now. So we don't have that contract. It would have been nice, and we'll watch out for that, but... Oh well. Uh, it's a better approach to Duna, though, altogether. Okay, here we go. So I'm sort of half halfway through extending the solar panels. Let me do more of that. Separation. And twitches. Many twitch engines. Solar panels carefully placed so that the twitch engines are not blowing at them. But we've still got sort of a roll to us. This doesn't leave us a whole lot of fuel. Oh boy, doesn't look like we uh, have a good approach right now. Yeah, it doesn't leave us a whole lot of fuel to work with for landing. But that's a good periapsis to start off with. Let's hope for the best. Okay, we'll make a, a maneuver here and an alarm. I really didn't want this to come in before Duna Colony 00 because that's supposed to do the scanning, remember? But it looks like it is and I don't have enough fuel to make too many adjustments so let's just queue it up and yeah, whoop, wrong thing. It's interesting, uh, this shows uh, EC expired. We haven't been off for that. Well, I guess maybe we have. We did have to time warp uh, to the transfer window, so maybe that's why. Okay. I wonder if we could just keep Rods B as a uh, tourist there for... because I don't think he has anything else better to do. He is consuming supplies, though. Alright, so uh, how about another launch? Alright, so as promised, we are going to send over the material kits to, in the future, expand those modules. And unfortunately, the material kits weigh more than the actual modules. The previous launch, the payload mass to Duna was 20 tons, including the orange. And this, uh, 36, 37 tons, of which uh, 16 tons are the actual material kits inside the containers, not including the container mass. The dry mass of this is 25 tons. So, yeah, it's really crazy um, and really expensive, these material kits. The inflatable modules are useful, but 
boy, I, I, yeah, it's just cumbersome sometimes. Anyway, I don't think they had to send so many material kits to inflate the Bigelow Aerospace mod inflatable module, but I don't know. Anyway, the drogue shoots are here. We're going to try and land with this. No heat shield, even though we're trying to aero capture with this. We definitely don't have the Delta V to not aero capture, but um, yeah, uh, the the max temp on this is 2000 Kelvin for the tanks. So we're hoping that that's going to be enough to protect them. And of course the engines generally have good good temperature ratings. Let's take a look. 2000 as well. Uh, the only question mark is these tanks, these procedural liquid tanks, and the landing struts. And maybe the fuel lines. But, uh, yep, the goal of this is to land and also be able to eventually take off again, though it might need to be refueled to make that happen. But we've got a docking port so it can be reused potentially, and also uh, RCS tanks. Uh, as I understand it, uh, Kerbals can change the type of cargo that these container tanks uh, contain, so maybe what actually gets sent back up is something other than material kits. It's whatever we get from the surface of Duna, we'll see. But that's the idea. So the launcher had to be a little bit larger because it's heavier and I decided to just slap on some linebacker SRBs because they're cool. So the linebacker SRBs will actually uh, start us off. We're going to throttle down the core engines, though I wanted the core engines still running so that we have added control. The linebackers do have gimbling. They have five degrees of gimbling, but it's nice to have something underneath the core stack just in case. And of course, we're going to be trying to recover the linebackers as well as the core. Um, about 6.5 to 6.6 meters per second is the impact speed for those. Okay, so here we go. Let's hope we get the stages back and that this can get underway to Duna. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle is up. The trick, of course, is that we're going to have to land these material kits close to the base, and that's going to be interesting. On the bright side, we do have the 1,200 meters per second to use, but is it really going to be enough to make sure that we hit the same location? I, I haven't done too much base building on Duna before in all these KSB episodes, so we're going to have to find out. All right, here we go. Launch. <laughs> core thrall down and starting our turn because we've got lots of thrust to weight ratio okay let's hold at 55 degrees and now throttle up and set off they go please don't bump into each other we need you back Let's get rid of the fairings before this stage runs out. Okay, fairing separation. Ooh, uh, that's not good. We've got a fairing that's sort of non-cooperative, if you will. Uh, why is it sometimes these fairings work and sometimes they don't, huh? Definitely got caught on that tank somehow. Sort of off to one side. So so got caught on these thruster blocks or something? I don't know. Seems like there's a recipe for disaster somewhere around here. Let's finish off this stage. Um, I don't suppose we could roll it off or something. It seems pretty darn wacky and persistent. I'm afraid of what it might destroy. But anyway, separation. And ignition. Okay, it fell off. Alright, on we go. I 
I just noticed we don't have a whole lot by way of power on this, do we? We got these, like, photovoltaic cells. And this says it's blocked by advanced nose cone types something or another. Well, we're going to have to conserve electric charge, apparently. This is not the best uh, setup we've got here. I don't... Well, I mean, okay. I, I can see why they're blocked. Because the sun is back there. Hopefully it'll be alright once we turn around. But yeah, I'm surprised I skimped so much on the solar panels. Oh, wait. And communication. Oh, shoot. I think we're gonna have to have this hang out in orbit for a little while. This doesn't have a comm dish. Uh, see, I just took it from the moon missions. Oh, let's boost up a little bit higher. Just took it from the moon missions and forgot to add communication to this one. Gonna have to improvise a mission to fix that situation. Possibly just docking uh, a little dish to the docking port up there will be fine. But I don't think I have time to handle it right now. Also, whatever we dock to that should probably have some additional solar panelry. Okay, that right there is a serviceable orbit, basically 96 by 96. And yeah, this will have to wait until next episode to fix. Let me get on with the, with the final launch, which will be of the reactor module. Okay, well we recovered the core and the two boosters as expected, but we have uh, taken a hit to our budget so far. Uh, not as much as if we didn't recover the core of the rockets and the boosters, but still. This is going to be the costliest launch of the Duna sequence, and this has the full orange this time, so it will try and make it back to orbit, potentially, but the reason why we're putting the, the full orange on this one is just in case there's some issue we don't want to lose the reactor. The reactor is very very expensive. You want to take a look um, let's see 230,000 if we remove it uh, 17,000 so it's more than 200,000 all on its own and it's got the dishes so we have communication it's got the normal solar panel arrangement with the orange as well and yeah that that uh, that is an issue trying to make sure that we don't lose such an expensive module so that's why we have the full orange and of course it has the drogue shoots and it has the the amount of delta v that we need to ensure the safety of this particular module well well anyway i'm hoping it does now it doesn't have a heat shield in this case we are hoping We'll see how the others go and hope that we can bring this down without a heat shield. It is going to try and uh, aero, aero capture around Duna. Uh, it looks like these modules have a heat tolerance of 1700 uh, Kelvin. So that's good. That's a good uh, number and we'll hope that that's enough. Alright, this is basically the same booster except we've got these air augmented solid rocket boosters to help us. We'll see how that goes. Just to give us an extra kick. And... to the launch pad. Alright, here we go. Last launch of the episode. Throttle is up. SAS is on. And... launch. Also, possibly the slowest launch of the episode, looking at it. Okay, separation and ignition. And poof. I think the controller on the first stage actually gets destroyed there. might want to avoid that in the future. 
staging is all wrong. Okay, fairing separation. This time, clean. I guess the G-forces are okay in this case. Let's not wait to deploy the antennae. Okay, and we're basically in the same situation as we were with the previous launches. So we're uh, almost in orbit, and it's a possibility that we can just transfer straight to Duna without uh, rounding out our orbit in this case. Let's get... I don't think I need that antenna on. Let's get these. Okay, well this looks like it's uh, going polar, which is fine. It might actually help things out as far as hitting the location where other things land. So let's make sure we turn to that node and we should probably start going since we're going to need some of the oranges fuel to finish this off. So skipper ignition. We're still in the atmosphere technically, so this is super efficient if you will. Hopefully nothing will snap off or burn up. Forget if the orange's engines no they're not on hinges, okay. Alright, separation. And ignition. Uh oh! Okay, we've got uh, solar panels blocking the engines situation, so let's retract those. Ooh, that was close. And let's try that again. Okay, better this time. I just saw something fly right by and I think it was our orbit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. But that's actually a different location. That's a later encounter. But that could work for us because we'd rather have the base and everything in the proper location before this lands. This is also containing less Delta V than I thought. Hmm, maybe we should go for the same encounter because that was passing by too low. Going with this approach at the descending node there does make the entry into Duna's atmosphere faster and therefore hotter. Oh, so much for the polar approach. We are not doing that. So there is a risk there. Now at this periapsis, how much does it actually get take to get into orbit? Uh, it doesn't seem like as much. 1,030. Still quite a lot. We definitely want to get into Duna's atmosphere and have it slow us down. Alright, but that's okay for now. Let's put a dummy maneuver there. And we will add that maneuver here. And it looks like it will be the second to arrive. So, for this episode we tried to launch four pieces of our Duna Armada, if you will. And three of them are on their way to Duna. The fourth one we need to fix up with additional solar panels and communications to make it work out and I'll do that in the next episode if I remember. Let's hope I remember. Anyway, on that note I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.